Hello, welcome to Building Wireframes uh, with PowerPoint. So a little bit about wireframes. So you can see here, I've typed in wireframe into Google. If you've never seen a wireframe before, you'll find that generally there are two types or classifications of wireframes. We have a low fidelity wireframe and a high fidelity wireframe. So there can be some uh, different interpretations of what low and high fidelity wireframes look like or what they should include. But in general, you can see uh, from this screen that uh, a low fidelity wireframe may look a little bit like this, for example, um, or um, typically like this. Whereas a high fidelity wireframe may simply just have more detail. So whereas a low fidelity might be grayscale based, um, you'll find that um, when we get up to the the high fidelity wireframe on the left hand side here you can see that the images are in place colors fonts text and so are in place so this might still be a static image um, but we've got here a low fidelity and high fidelity wireframe so you can see the difference here so generally uh, when we're building a low fidelity wireframe um, or design layout uh, it it normally presents uh, the information that will be displayed on the page. So we can clearly see that that's the case. Can we open that? Nope. Okay. So secondly, it gives us an outline of the structure and the layout of the page. This is why we might develop one. And also it can convey the overall direction uh, of the user interface. So um, if you imagine you've been asked to build a new website, you may start off by developing some simple um, sketches. Now these wireframes, um, although you're seeing them in this type of electronic form, wireframes could be developed initially, um, maybe with just with a pen and paper. So you might start off like that to get some general ideas um, in terms of display, what should be on the page, um, outline of the kind of like I've suggested, the structure and the layout of the page. So with that in mind, um, of course, by all means, grab a paper, grab some paper and a pen and start drawing. You'll see that the general characteristics um, of, the, of the low fidelity wireframe, which we'll be discussing in this video, um, has some general, there are some general principles. You can see that um, an image uh, may be more often than not be uh, presented with a box with uh, a cross for it. Uh, and text may be presented um, or represented, sorry, with blocks. So of course, um, some may use uh, actual fonts. Some designs you might see use, utilizing blocks. So you can see that buttons can be represented as a block and potentially um, the actual font or the word or potentially just a block gray block. So you can see from this uh, low fidelity design that it does present the information that's going to be displayed on the page. I can clearly see that. It does give me an outline of the structure and it does convey the overall direction because I can suggest here that the overall direction for this site is to get um, users to videos, allow them to uh, search uh, and um, find and view play video so let's now utilize powerpoint to actually generate a very simple uh, low fidelity wireframe so i'm going to open up powerpoint so the first thing i need to do is sort out my my layout here because um, my website normally is a little bit taller than that i want to display the whole page so the first thing you might want to do is change that. So if I go to design and uh, slide size, I've got this custom slide option, which I can then change. So I'm just going to change the height to double and then press OK. Um, maximize. Oh, let me do that again. Sorry, double it, sorry. So 40. Uh, maximize. There we go. So we've got that. So I want to get rid of these um, items here. I can just delete them or right click, go to layout, and then you can't see it, but there's a selection at the bottom left called blank. There we go. So now I've got my general uh, design. You can see I've got these lines here. So if I go to view, 
I can turn these on and off. That's just going to help me line things up. If I need to line things up, <coughs> I've also got a ruler option here. And if I wanted to use grid lines to help me line things up, um, that's also in place. So let's just build some of the, the basic components. So I'm going to go to home again and select shape. So I'm going to need a, a rectangle here. So I'm going to draw that rectangle. Now this is going to be a general, uh, it's going to be an image. So I need to get rid of the, the fill. I want to change the outline to black and then also change the weight. So to around about two or three, up to you. So once I've got that, I now need to draw the cross in the middle. So I select the line tool and it does snap nicely. So top to bottom, so it snaps in the corner and then I can press uh, shift and select both of them. So then I can change the actual color of it. There we go. So now that's in place, um, I'm going to select all of them, right click, and then I'm going to group them. That's going to allow me then to actually make these changes like this. So that's going to be my image shape. So now I've got that, I can move that outside of this <coughs> stage and area and I can utilize and copy and paste that where I need it. So the next thing I'm going to need is some text. So I'm going to make some shapes for text. So I'll make a shape like that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right, I'm going to zoom in and then I'm going to change this field to black or sorry gray for text and then there's going to be no outline uh, so I don't need to deal with that so I've got different types of text I've got the bold text or the big text the headline header text I can then make a um, represent a smaller size text or heading and then I can then represent um, just normal text now normal text can be represented in a, in a block um, or else you may want to separate this block to represent different words. So different words have different sizes, obviously. So you can uh, represent that too if you wanted to. Obviously the alternative is to uh, insert a, a text box and just start typing. That can also be achieved. So now I've got that in place. It's going to zoom out. So those are the basic elements. Um, that I'm going to need. Um, at this point, I could also uh, create some buttons uh, and so on in the same fashion, but we're just going to look at some structure. So I'm going to build a navigation bar. So I'm going to build, start building my page now. So I need some sort of navigation area, which is probably going to have um, a different color from the rest of my site. So I put that in place. I'm going to get rid of the <coughs> outline. So I don't have to deal with that color. So I've got that in place, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to need some text, so like a, um, like a logo text. So I'm going to represent that like that. And then I'm going to need some uh, menu items. So I'm just going to drag those in like that. There we go. And what I can do is if I select these here using uh, shift and select, I can arrange things um, if I want to, so the, in terms of the alignment, so I can distribute them um, nicely. So they're nicely distributed now in terms of space. I can do that with that one as well. So I can align things up really quickly here. Um, so uh, the next thing I'm going to develop or include is a nice image space underneath. So just move that there, bring that across. It's going to select and bring that down across there. So you can now see I've got um, on my page, I'm going to have some sort of uh, menu area and then a nice little image of some sort. And at this point, uh, you could potentially remove this and Oh, the, the crosses and input a select where text is going to be maybe there's going to be a button here for example so that could be an alternative 
But underneath this, I'm going to have um, some sections where I'm going to uh, allow users to access some items on my page or on my website, sorry. So what I can do is uh, if I group these together, <coughs> I can obviously then control and V that and then make some nice sections. So you can see that it's building nicely. Um, let's line these up. Okay. Uh, and then I can then copy and paste all of that <coughs> into that section there. And there we have a, <coughs> a simple wireframe. Yep, so we've got this simple uh, low fidelity wireframe. So um, now what we can do, if we want to, we can save this as a JPEG. So all you need to do is do a file save as, and then select uh, where you want to save it, obviously. And then select from the drop down box JPEG and give it a name and save. So you can save it as a JPEG and then you can utilize it however you want to. So that's a simple uh, guide on using PowerPoint to create some low fidelity uh, designs.